Yes. Ready. Uh, hello, welcome to Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. I'm Scott. I'm Nell. Uh, and today we're going to do the Pi Day book, the Pi book tag video. Pi Day book tag because it is, well, it's not here anymore, but it is um, the 14th of March, 314. 3.14. Yeah. Um, hey. This was done by Angela at the Literary Science Alliance, sorry, the Literature, Literature Science, Science Alliance. Alliance. Um, Which, just every time I see that channel name, I think about marriage. The Literature Science Alliance. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> I love that. that I, I just... Yeah, it makes me happy. The videos that she is creating are this, uh, just, it just makes me happy. Um, because literature science. Literature science. Because I have a degree in science and now yeah, I have literature. I have a, a, a not degree in literature, um, but that's sort of what we bond over is academic stuff in our various fields. Um, yeah. So anyway, we're going to do this uh, tag. Um, this is a super quick one. There's only six prompts. So you ready? You ready? Let's ready? do it. Bam. Number one. Pi is an irrational number. A name, a character who you feel is irrational. Oh, I've completely forgotten who I picked beforehand. Um, my pick was Anya from the Cherry Orchard. I think she is batshit crazy. <laughs> um, and I think irrational is a kind way of putting that. Um, when we were talking about these questions and these prompts, we actually... I, I wonder if the the hair-brained Anya in Buffy was inspired by the Cherry Orchard. I think that I think that it, I feel like it, Buffy was smart enough to make that reference. If it wasn't named, uh, if it wasn't the inspiration, I think it was later played upon. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, an irrational character. I think just about anybody in this book here, except for Eusarian. Um, so anybody other than the main character in Catch-22. Oh, it was irrational. I haven't read it yet, so I don't know. Ooh. Look, look. Catch-22 is the only war novel I've ever read that makes any sense. Harper Lee. Oh, I love Harper Lee. Also, another author you probably got respect for. To my mind, there have been two great American novels in the past 50 years. Catch-22 is one of them. Stephen King. Well, what's the other one, Stephen King? <laughs> yeah, but like, come on! We should actually guess that and then look up the answer. That would be funny. Um, okay, question two. Pi comes from the word perim perimetro, which means perimeter. Talk about a book that has to do with borders between countries or worlds. I have stretched this definition to its limit and I'm going to talk about um, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance which definitely has at its core the border between sanity and insanity in our own minds and in one mind in particular and how completely you can be on one side of that border or the other. Um. I have, again, uh, not stretched, but bended <laughs> in multiple Redefined. locations uh, and made the answer to this to be Brave New World by Huxley. I think there's lots of borders in Brave New World. They've got the... Um... Yeah, they have the, the natives that live separately to the uh, engineered people and then the engineered people have uh, a stratification yeah. yeah um a very class system and yeah. yeah i think that's a good one for borders yeah i thought so uh pi is constant what's a comforting book constant in your life um, so I picked uh, a bit of a strange one. When I was a quite a small child, my, oh, yes, very short, <laughs> I'm still very short, um, but, but when I was a very young child, sort of between the ages of three and six, um, I did some professional acting in musical theatre. And Nell's appeared in a movie with Meryl Streep. I totally have. You can't see me. I'm too short. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was I was an extra in Evil Angels. But when I was very little, is that the Dingoes Ate My Baby movie? That's the Dingoes Ate My Baby. I think it's called A Cry in the Night or something 
if you're an American and you know the Dingoes Ate My Baby movie, what's the what's the title? We call it Evil Angels in Australia. Um, anyway, uh, one of the first place that I actually really remember is I was the youngest child in Seven Little Australians, and I was gifted a hardcover copy of that book um, in the lead up to opening night, which is signed by the author's daughter. Um, and I still have that, and that is that is definitely a constant in my life, that little story. Um, from the time I was very little. Aww. Aww. I, I don't feel like I can pull that sort of nostalgia <laughs> out. It, it is, it, like, I, I had to memorise the script, and it is, like, deeply in my person. Um, so, don't try and compare that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not... Um, when I was a kid growing up, my father would read me the famous five novels and as I got older, I would read them myself. I quite enjoy that bit of mindless escapism from Enid Blyton. Yeah. And even now, despite them being children's books, I still get entertainment out of Yeah, that. I think everyone has Enid Blyton in their childhood. Everyone from our generation. Anyway. I, I think she you know, she wrote Noddy, she wrote Far Away Train, The Wishing Chair, she's a famous five, Secret Seven. The um, Gollywogs. The Gollywogs. Which is a bit controversial now. <laughs> they are. Also I didn't realise until somebody pointed out that the word wog at the end of gollywog means wog. Yes. <laughs> like... Horrifying. Um, prompt four. Pi has infinite decimal places. What series, what is the series you feel will never end? I really struggled with this one. I don't really read um, series uh, that aren't completely published. Like old enough to be completed, so I don't really have that feeling about anything. Yeah, I feel like I have to bend, uh, bend this rule to be a series that I will struggle to complete. Um, but at the moment, I have uh, I've relatively recently discovered the joy that is Agatha Christie, and I am oh, enjoying a lot of those. slowly getting through her books. But I never want to be, uh, I never only want to read one genre and I never only want to read one author. And yeah, it I, might take you pretty much a whole life to read all I, those. And, and I'm starting with the most famous ones, which I suspect are the best. So by the time I get up to the, the last few, I might actually be more wanting to go back and read and then there were none or something. Oh, and, yeah. And, but I don't know, maybe maybe once you know who the killer is, it's not as good. I don't know, maybe. I, I really enjoyed Moiter on the Orient Express and I, I'd seen the movie and remembered who the killer was pretty early on. So. What's your favourite pie? And name a book that you feel embodies the pie. What's your favourite pie? Oh, well, this is hard because I had the answer. And then you said something ridiculous, and I said, that's not a pie. That's like calling Ta-Ta-Tan a pie. Uh, and, and you said, Ta-Ta-Tan -ta -ta is, is a totally pie. a pie. And, and now I'm like, well, I was going to say apple and rhubarb, because apple and rhubarb, but it's not Ta-Ta-Tan. And I think, considering the nostalgia that was our honeymoon in France and Ta-Ta-Tans. Oh, so delicious. Um... If you do go to France, just uh, eat. Eat. <laughs> Make sure you get a tartar tan. Uh, and if you live in France, lucky bastard. <laughs> so you're gonna say tartar tan? I'm gonna say tartar tan. And what's your book that's tartar tan? Well, um, uh, well, a tartar tan is a typically French book, so I have to go for a French author. Yes. Um. I'm sort of figuring this out on the spot. You know, I've forgotten what my logic was and what book I picked. <laughs> Alright, so I'll um, interrupt. I picked Lemon Meringue Pie because it's freaking delicious. And I thought about it and it's the perfect balance of sweet 
and tart, so sweet and sour, I guess. Um, and so the book that I picked was Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine because I think that that is the perfect balance of like gritty, dark, traumatic, and heartwarming and lovely. Oh. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, Tartatan. Tartatan. Uh, right, so Tartatan is like a caramelized apple. Mmm, tasty. But not quite. Um, uh, buttery caramelized but, <laughs> apple. Um, it's all sorts of yummy. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go for a French author um, that can balance the sour things in life with the sweet things. And I'm just going to pick my all-time favourite book here. I'm going to go for The Count of Monte Cristo. Um, yeah, it's... Yeah. It's, there's a lot of... A lot of joy and a lot of sweetness in that book, balancing yeah. a lot of shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think it's good. That's good. Uh, now, the next prompt is to uh, tag, tag people. people that we would like to see do this video. So, um, so we've got four people we're going to tag. Uh, first of all, we're going to tag, uh, Janelle, Nell's namesake, um, <laughs> at Too Fond of Books. Yes. Hi, Janelle. Um, she doesn't shorten it. To Nell, no. 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 We are, we do have the same name. Um, we're going to tag Alison Heights, Alison Hikes. In the Bookwoods. In the Bookwoods. Um. Paper Knot Books. Yes. And who is the fourth one? And The Fifth Elliot. Oh, and The Fifth... I think we've got a diverse range of uh, opinions and genres and interesting people to do this tag. To get on it, folks. Uh, also, if you just... Uh, if nobody's tagging you in tag videos and you want to do this, then we get on tag it. you. And I think that's what... Um, Angela at the Literature Science Alliance said when she made this video recently. Um, happy Pi Day, eat lots of pie. Uh, and remember, ideas are more powerful. They're more powerful than 3.14159256. Mm -hmm.